Good morning. Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. สวัสดีค่ะ大家早安。Uh, it's my great pleasure and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you some of my experience. My name is Belinda. จางกระจอนสัก so it's quite a long uh, last name. Uh, my Chinese name is Zhang Linqi. I'm a Taiwanese, not Thai. I was born in uh, Taiwan, uh, Keelung City, uh, which is uh, in the, the most northern part of Taiwan. I moved to Thailand with my family 40 some years ago. So don't guess my age. <laughs> I speak Thai and Chinese in my daily life because uh, they are my most fluent uh, languages. But today I have to speak to you in English, so please be patient with my English. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, give you some background of my company. Uh, I am the vice president of the BDI Group company. Uh, which is uh, located at Cha Cha Sao province and uh, Superbrakan province. We are the uh, automotive uh, manufacturer for the OEM parts. And this is the BDI Group affiliates. The first one, BDI Group company, uh, is a um, uh, holding share company for all the uh, relating business in our group and also doing the R&D. Uh, the second one, Bangkok Diecasting and Injection Company Limited is the original company which is my father was the founder and this is located at Bang Kli or Sung province for some years ago. And the third one, BDI Alloy Enterprise, uh, is producing the aluminum die casting parts located at uh, Cha Cha Sao province. And we have BDI Tools and Mold Company Limited, uh, which is producing the mold and dies for the all the uh, auto parts. And recent years, we have Thai Taiwan BDI Technology College which is also uh, located at Kampli. And we have other uh, investing companies uh, for our groups, like Anyo Industry. It is a industrial voice and chemical import and exports. We have Tai Chiu Chan, which is produce, producing wire harness for the automotives and motorcycle. And Tai Chiu Chan, we have um, car accessories, white harness, and so on. And the last one, we have Big Tree Resident Condominium, uh, which is uh, recently we also developed some real, real estate. Our major customer are the motorcycles of automotive um, from Japan. So you can see all the brands here like Thai Honda, Thai Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Thai Yamaha. And we also joint venture with uh, Thai uh, Koito Seisa uh, which is the Koito uh, manufacturing of the Toyota Group's uh, head lab in Thailand also. These are all the main uh, parts which we uh, <coughs> produce uh, right now. We, you can see all the plastic injection parts, which uh, including all the parts that we can see outside. We call the outframe parts. Another group is the aluminum die casting part. This is for the uh, we call multi multiple engine, multiple purpose engine, which can use in the uh, like. Uh, water pump and uh, boat, boat mortar, something like that. So all the aluminum die casting parts. 
And we also have uh, some diagnostic parts for motorcycle also, like uh, this one I would like to show you. This is called the uh, half wheel. We have both um, front and uh, rear wheel for all the um, motorcycles which are running on the road in Thailand, all over Thailand. Yes. And right now we also export to, we are the main exporter, the hubs and diagnostic parts to Brazil also. Okay, just now we have seen this one already. And some parts for the, what we call the, the flywheel inside the, this kind of model. And also outboard engine products for, for the boat. And these are all the um, uh, production lines, some of the production lines uh, in Chachin Sao province. Uh, we have CNC, we have um, uh, like chalk blasting, uh, die casting, and painting. And you can see some of the uh, production line service for, from uh, um, BAE. These are the figures of the moles, which uh, every mole is so big, <laughs> maybe uh, weighted uh, one ton or two tons for, for one, one big mole. We, we have also uh, made some moles uh, from Thailand and we also import some moles from uh, Taiwan also. And these are the die casting machine we have uh, from uh, 150 tons uh, until 1,200 tons. <coughs> and some of them we have, we, we are using the robots to take off the, the parts because the parts can be weighed uh, up to uh, 5 kilo, five kilo, kilograms. So we have some secondary parts. Okay. That's all my presentation. No, <laughs> just joking. I, I would like to start my story uh, right after this, okay? Um, so, um, just now uh, I have shown you some of um, our family business. My father came to Thailand 50 years ago with only one air ticket and uh, a dictionary, dictionary. Not like a, a piece of pillow or mat, like other Chinese people in Thailand. We can say that he came with technical knowledge, okay? And uh, he started up with many kinds of uh, business and failed uh, until he met Japanese businessman from Honda, from Japan, uh, who asked him to produce motorcycle parts. And half, uh, half will, just now I have shown you, uh, made of aluminum alone. Because he could speak some sh uh, simple, ja simple Japanese, so he gained a great chance from Thai Honda to produce many open parts. Our business grows, and we found out that we are always in need of technicians. You know, when we hire a technician, we have to spend at least 10 years to train him. And at the time, at that time, we had people with low skills. And, but a uh, high quality and integrity. We have most of our employees uh, who, act, who work for us uh, 10 years ago, 10 years plus, but I have to admit that very few of them graduated from uh, university. They are mostly high school, high school graduated with only two <coughs> months degree. At least this is the reason why we could gradually expand our business scale with quite low turnover rate. My father worked hard, very hard in many positions, like such as um, uh, managing director, factory manager, engineer, and sometimes shift leader as well. When he came to realize that uh, he, he needs more people to satisfy his huge order, it was quite late. We could only hire a few people or even have to hire experienced 
employees with high salary, we often end up with a fast turnover rate. This is nothing mm, so surprised since they came to work just because of the money, treating this working place just as a springboard you know, job to other career paths. So my father had to work harder and harder, including me, so for me. Because I was the only one who he can trust because I never said I would quit the job. In this period, although we have high skill and experience, employees, but they were very low in royalty. So we have been facing with human resource uh, problems all these, all these years. Marketing is not quite a big matter since we have very good relationship with our Japanese customers. Our business grew every year, at least 20% with localization content rates, 85% policy. Unfortunately, in 1997, Thailand faced a financial crisis, which also had a great impact in our business. As one, some of you may still remember, the majority of financing institutions in Thailand bankrupt, and people had no purchasing power. Our orders suddenly decreased more than 60%, and we were forced to lay off employees. Questions come, came to us. What kind of uh, employees we would like to keep and maintain? The following factors will keep them survive from uh, being laid off. First, people with skills that are related to our technology. Second, people would have, who have high royalty and integrity to our company and been working for several years. Three, people who have very good performance in terms of hardworking, fast learning, responsible, creative, performing to the company rules, with relationship ability, uh, with leadership ability, and so on. So we maintain about 50% of our, our employees have started another fight again to encounter our 200 million debts. We were, at that time, we think about our business. How could we turn the crisis into opportunity? We review what we had done wrong during our bull period, for example. First, we did not have enough time to train our employees. When we increased order, we also increased workers and overtime to cope with the customer needs. That led us to have excessive egg workers, and when we have to lay off them, I really felt sorry for them. It was not their fault, but the management neglected to have good planning on how to develop their working skill instead of just increasing labor forces. Two, the reasons why we had a debt from the bank loan about 200 million bucks, which is in actual, we only borrowed about 120 million, was because of the devalue of the Thai baht at that time. Remember, the, the exchange rate of the US dollar went from 24 baht per dollar to the highest 52, dollar, uh, 52 baht per dollar. Still remember, right? So we were lack of risk management in terms of financial control. It, it was my duty also at that time. But I learned the lessons. And from that time, I put my whole effort to solve this financial problem by negotiating the debt with the bank and refinancing of the debts. That took me quite several years to recover, and now I could say that um, with that hurting experience, we were now quite strong in financial status. The third one, we have done wrong. During the busy time, we hardly had time to improve our business. Later, with a slowly, slowly recovery of the order, the order, we had more time to do something new. For example, we analyzed cost, production process, changing technology, like production automation system or implementing ERP, and also developing new products and customers to diversify our risk. So, 
The, the above situation is the real life in the business cycle. Later, we also faced more financial crisis in the last few years. This time, we have better uh, prepared and encountered the problems with more confidence. In the year of 2000, <coughs> my father planned to open a technical school because he recalled his exper experience in Taiwan before he came to Thailand. That, that there was an education system called dual, dual vocational education. He said, if we can produce technician according to our needs, then we can, we can save a lot of time. It was the first time I heard about this kind of system, education system, besides what I am familiar with. I remember he used to say to me that in his life, he had two dreams. One is to be a business owner, and the other one is to open a technical school. In Chinese tradition, we are taught to be a merchant or an entrepreneur, and his dream came true when he became an owner of the car business. So, we began to plan and set up a technical school by help from his friends. The school was running smoothly, smoothly in the beginning with some part of the curriculum was a cooperation between our company and the school. Our school offers vocational certificate and high vocational diploma. We think this group of people is more practical in use. They know how to do and most of them came from not so rich family background. This makes them more willing to work harder and more patient to the problems. Why the employees uh, graduated from the university are mostly the office staff or the direct labor, which my father did, didn't quite give much importance. I think the reason is that most of the staff know not much about technology or some of them take a job just because no other choices. Sometimes they have to work even though it is not their professional skills. I think this is the most tragedy in life. If you are not able to be, to be yourself, you will not be able to work passionately and happily in your career. You are wasting your time and, of course, the company's time. So, in conclusion, I would like to share my thoughts about what we can do by linking uh, the academic and industry together to have cooperation education. I'm not real, really an educator by my, my, uh, my profession, but since now I've inherited this college, definitely would drive, I would drive myself to be an, a good educator. I believe all of you can be my teachers and my advisor. So the industrial needs in terms of um, human, in terms of um, future human resources development would be as following. First, understanding the enterprise culture and technology. This is very important. In my university time, I graduated from uh, National Taiwan University uh, in Taiwan. Even though I was brought up in Thailand and graduated from Romani International School, but my university time is in Taiwan, was in Taiwan. So I remember, I planned myself to enter my father's business right after I graduated. It was a very strong will to, um, pre to prepare myself for every single subject I took or any extra language skill needed. For example, Japanese language, yes, <coughs> no surprise. I can speak Chinese, Thai, English, and Japanese. Because I know very clear, clearly what I have to, to be ready after I started to work. So I would not, I would not waste too much time in summer vacation to have fun. I went to work and training in our company constantly. My father was a good teacher and trainer to me he always gave me hard time and made me learn by the real condition and environment. Although I was, I always make him to give me a break 
to do what I want to do, but he always refused me and continued to give me the most difficult lessons in my life. Yes, young people would not understand all these good intention from, from our elders unless they're really caught up with problems and are able to solve the problems by themselves with his, with his own ability. I think nowadays as parents we are too kind-hearted to our children because we are afraid of we are afraid they will be hurt. It is okay, but as an educator I think we have to play more of this role if not our young generation will not be strong enough to survive by the his own. So in my college, all students have to learn how to work in real workplace and also the company culture in the same time to get ready. I encourage the students better know what they want to be and what to do since high school. So even when they further their study in university, they would have more clear big pictures of their future. To be able to do this, I think uh, the teachers are the key success factors. The teachers should be able to teach the real work and culture uh, according to the enterprise we have cooperation with. To tell you the truth, you want to listen? <laughs> <laughs> the company only willing to provide the places, equipment, or other supports, but not a teacher or trainer. Unless we have nearly retired people so they can be the trainer to the students after retired. As a result, you should try to think how to get your lecturer be able to understand the real world condition, and this will have your teacher be able to do the, finish, the, the useful research which is needed by the enterprise. Secondly, developing a person with moral and ethics, especially in nowadays where the moral bankruptcy taking place all the time. Um, for example, the food industry produces poor quality food to deceive the customers. Or the pro profitable enterprise taking advantages to the resources and to the environment and so on. The very fundamental criteria to accept the new graduate to work is to see whether he is a good person or not. We will observe whether he is well disciplined or not. With, uh, we can see from his activity he joins by his uh, interest. He does not need to have very high score grade by graduation, but we expect what achievement he had during his study time. Actually, we need more information or more comments from the institute besides the academic score when we uh, want to hire him. For, for example, the community service, moral <coughs> practice activity, or any social charities activity which are not related to the academic score. Yes. So, uh, we want. Uh, some, we want quality people both healthy in body and mind. These people will be worthwhile to develop as a leader in the future. Thirdly, develop, developing a good communicator and collabor collaborative <coughs> person. In the new era of coming agency, we need to work with different cultures and languages. If we are lack of communication skill or EQ, we sometimes have the communication breakdown, even to our own people. To be able to get along well with this kind of people, I think uh, I think we should come from the open heart to be not felt competitive, but to be collaborative to each other for the mutual benefits. Actually, language is just a part of communication. The most important thing is our attitude and sincerity that makes Com uh, communication successful. Lastly, developing an entrepreneur. In Chinese way of thinking, 
The more talented people, the more self-actualization needed. I think this is true. And the way to keep talented people as long as we can is not just giving them money for a position, but give them an opportunity to be an entrepreneur. When the business expands, we need more and more vendors, subcontractors, and makers of the parts to support us. If every employee has clear goal in their career, we are ready to support. My company buys machines, molds, or parts from Taiwan each year not less than 200 million bucks. We have more choices to select the best quality and competitive price because we have so many SME in Taiwan. I would like to see many talented people from all of your universities who, have, who are ready to serve the industry, not just being an employee, but also as a supply chain entrepreneur. So my last page. Okay. In conclusion, I would like to see more cooperation between academic and industry. This is the big integration in our limited resources usage. Do not think too much, just take action. <laughs> I remember last year, uh, our former Deputy Minister of Education of Taiwan, Dr. Lin Chong Ming, came to, to give speech in Thailand. As he talked about the environment issues and said, we can help our environment by just eat less meat. Since the animal husbandry, has husbandry is very harmful to our environment. I was very impressed and totally agree with his presentation that this is a, ver a very correct concept. So I immediately meeting with my, my teachers and explain to them what I think. Most of them agree. So we start to having one day vegetarian food in our college and now we have two days by this semester. <laughs> I think at least what I can do is building an awareness of the sustainable uh, environment since my students are going to be the one part of our industry in the future. Our school policy more or less will absorb in their mind. One day these school concepts will become their habits and think critically in what they plan to do. So just do the right thing and not only do think right. Or as Finland Education said, not just try to do the wrong thing righter. There will be too late. Students need the correct direction. We are, we are all their role model. So what we expect them to do Let's do it first. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to both Taiwan and Thailand where I was born and grown up. I have learned the best culture ever in the world, in the world and I'm very proud of uh, that I could be one part of these two countries. So right now, my role, just acting like a bridge connecting between Thai and Taiwan, these two countries. Meanwhile, also acting uh, as a bridge between, um, between the education and industry is my great honor. Uh, may God bless both countries, have closer relationship and cooperation both in economic and education. I wish all of you good health, success, and happiness forever. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mom, for your very insightful presentation. Your presentation provides us a wider perspective on how industry world and academic world are interconnected with each other. We invite Dr. Prasanna Kirati Gon, former Secretary General for Higher Education Commission and former President of University College.
Council of National College University of Technology, London, to present a token to Mr. Spillinger,